ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة تركهم على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك صلاة ربي وسلامه عليه يقول الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد All praise is due to Allah We seek his guidance and his forgiveness And we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and the whispering of our desires, whom Allah guides, no one can misguide, and whom he allows to be misled, no one can guide. And I bear witness that there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone having no partners, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger and his perfect worshiper. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, O you who believe, fear Allah as he deserves to be feared, and do not die except in a state of Islam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O mankind, fear your Lord who created you from a single soul and produced from that soul its mate and made from their combination many men and women. So fear your Lord whom you ask each other by and by the ties of kinship. Verily Allah is ever watchful over you. And Allah says, O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct. He will correct for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger, then they are indeed victorious. As for what follows, we've made it to the month of Ramadan. Talha ibn Ubaidillah, he says, as reported by Imam Ahmed and Al Nasa'i and others, rather Ibn Majah and others, Talha says that two men came and they accepted Islam in Medina. They were new Muslims. And so the Prophet ﷺ then said, who will take care of them for me? Talha said, I will. And so these two men lived with Talha. And then on one occasion, the Prophet ﷺ sent out a campaign, a military campaign, and one of the men was killed in it. The next man, the second one, lived another year, but he died on his bed. Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu anhu saw them in a dream. And he saw the one who died on his bed enter into gates that Talha said looked like the gates of paradise. And so he saw that man enter in through those gates and he saw that man come out. And then he saw the one who had died as a martyr follow that man. And he entered in through the gates and then he came out. And then they both looked at Talha and they said to him, it's not your time yet. Talha woke up and he started talking to people about the dream that he had. And they found it to be so strange. And so the Prophet ﷺ, he heard about their conversation and he said, what amazed you about these things? They said, O Messenger of Allah, what amazed us was that the one who was a martyr went in second. The one who died on his bed went first. And then he said, how long did he live after him? They said he lived for an entire year. And so Rasulullah said he lived for an entire year after him. How many sajdas did he, did he pray after him? And did he experience the month of Ramadan? And didn't he fast the month of Ramadan? The distance that is between them is like the distance between the heavens and the earth. And so experiencing the month of Ramadan, just being able to live one more year 
to experience one more Ramadan is an incredible blessing. And so beginning this month with gratitude, we spend six months saying, Allahumma balighna Ramadan. Oh Allah, allow us to experience the month of Ramadan. Allow us to live. Give us the amount of breaths and heartbeats to be able to experience another Ramadan, to live, to see another one. And here we are. And so we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. I wanted to share a couple of things just as an introduction to this month. And I wanted to begin with the first being gratitude. But secondly, Ramadan is the month of taqwa. And at the beginning of the introduction of the verses of fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum al-siyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Allah says, fasting has been prescribed, it's been written for you, as it was written for those before you, that you may experience taqwa. Now there are lots of acts of worship where we are not told the reason why. We can't definitively say the reason why we do this is this. Or the reason why it is haram for us to do this is that. There are many that we can't say. We say at the end of the day it's simply ta'abudi or it's ritualistic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to do it and that's why we do it. Allah prohibited us from doing it and that's why we don't do it. But with fasting, right at the introduction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a reason or a wisdom why we fast. He says that we may gain taqwa. That we may have consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear of Allah. Well then the question to be asked is how does fasting make us have taqwa? This is the month of taqwa. How does fasting teach us taqwa? I'll give you an example. When you are fasting, Today is Friday, you showered before you came to the masjid. And when you were in that shower and you had some water go into your mouth, what did you do with that water? You spat it out. When you're making wudu and water goes just a little bit further down your throat than it's supposed to, you spit it out. What made you spit it out in that moment when nobody sees you? Nobody in the world sees you in that moment. If you had just had a little bit of your thirst quenched, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you and that's more than enough. In a couple of hours when it's 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock and you're at home and you're done with work and you are thirsty and fatigued and dehydrated and cranky and tired and you could just open up your refrigerator door because you're all alone and all of those problems would go away and yet you don't do it. And so the question then becomes why don't you do it? The reason is because you know that if nobody else sees you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you, and that is the essence of taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kullu amal ibn Adam lah illa sawm fa innahu li. Allah says in the hadith Qudsi that all of the actions of the son of Adam, the daughter of Adam are for them, except for fasting, it is for me. It is done exclusively for me. And I reward it. And so the month of Ramadan teaches us taqwa through this particular act of worship which is fasting. But if we were to go then and this same consciousness of Allah were to implement it regarding everything else that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made forbidden, then we would be of the people of taqwa. Which leads us to number three, it is the month of the Qur'an. You see, because fasting teaches us taqwa. And taqwa gives us access to the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the introduction to the Qur'an in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, Alif Lamim, ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا للمتقين. This book is a guidance for the people of taqwa. And so the more you ascend in your taqwa because of your fast, the more access you have to the Qur'an because of your taqwa. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this month a month in which the reading of the Qur'an is recommended and encouraged and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Ibn Abbas told us كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجود الناس وكان أجود ما يقون في رمضان He was the most generous of the people and he was most generous during the month of Ramadan Why? When the angel used to visit him, Jibreel and he used to study with him the Quran review with him the Quran every year during the month of Ramadan and so number three is that Ramadan is the month of the Quran شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن هدى للناس. The month of the Quran, the month of Ramadan, in which the Quran was revealed a guidance to the people. And so, of the goals that we should have for ourselves during this month is to increase our relationship with the Quran. 
And this is an individual goal that all of us should have. You know, you will read from the Salaf that many of them would read the Qur'an in a single day. And so they would do 30 khatams during the month of Ramadan. You'll read about Imam al-Shafi'i in particular that he used to do 60 khatams in the month of Ramadan. But that's like telling a person who hasn't run a mile in like 10 years about someone who would run the mile in three minutes. There's no, there's no comparison, right? And so our objective is not to be like them. But our objective is to be better than we were last year. And so completing the Qur'an once, or completing the Qur'an twice, but making sure that every single day that I am reading from the Qur'an, and I am establishing that relationship with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that I have a goal for myself. And I will tell you also that many people, when they have a goal regarding the Qur'an, they keep it very, very privately. They don't tell a single soul about it. And that is fine and good and great if you accomplish your goals. But if every year I set out a goal for myself, and then I fail, and then I keep it quiet, and I don't tell anybody, and I give up, and I quit, then maybe it's time for me to grab somebody by the hand and say, hey, I have a goal this year, and I need you to hold me accountable, and I need you to help me, or maybe I need to join a group of people, and all of us read the Qur'an together. All of us share our goals together. As the African proverb says, that if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And so let me share with a number of people. And, let me, and you know what? The Sahaba, they knew. They knew how much the others had memorized. And if you remember from the battle of Uhud, when the Prophet ﷺ had to bury multiple companions in a single grave, he would begin by saying, put the one in the grave who knows more Qur'an than the other. And so what does that tell you? It tells you that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, they knew that this person has Surah Al-Baqarah, and this person has Al-Baqarah and Al-Imran, and maybe this person has half of the Qur'an, or this person has the entire Qur'an. They had a general idea of how much people had memorized. Many times, or maybe not many times, but some of us sabotage our relationship with the Qur'an by keeping it private. Thinking that that is sincerity, when in reality it is just an excuse for us to not have a relationship with the Qur'an. So number three is that the month of Ramadan is a month where we challenge ourselves to have a relationship with the Qur'an and to read and to read and to reflect on the Qur'an. Number four, the month of the Qur'an or the month of Ramadan is the month of generosity. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he says that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana ajwadu ma yakunu fi Ramadan, that he was the most generous in Ramadan. We all know how Ramadan goes. We all know that Ramadan is going to have lots of fundraisers and if you dare to leave this masjid to go and pray in another masjid so that you can avoid a fundraiser, you're probably going to walk into another fundraiser somewhere else. Everywhere that you go. And then you go online and there's a fundraiser. And, 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 right? I remember one time, one Ramadan, one person complained in the masjid and he said, Sheikh, how much are we supposed to give? How much are we supposed to give? Every night it almost seemed like there was a fundraiser. And so he said, give as much as you expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you. Do you expect your rizq every day, two times a month? Do you expect the rizq from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every hour and every minute? Then give as much as you expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And alhamdulillah, it's been so facilitated for us where you can give almost every day. You can go onto one of these websites like LaunchGood and you can find 30 day Ramadan campaigns and every single day you can donate a little bit of money, a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, a hundred dollars, whatever you want to give. You can find a campaign, you can find a project that's something that you believe in that you want to donate to and you can donate. And you can prepare also for the last 10 nights, recognizing that we know that in the last 10 nights that there was going to be fundraisers and all of these types of things. And so preparing for that, the 27th night and the 23rd and all of that, saving up a little money so that when the fundraiser happens that I'll be ready and prepared. There's a beautiful verse in Surah At-Tawbah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجَ لَأَعَدُّوا لَهُ عُدَّةً If the munafiqeen had wanted to go out with you, O Messenger of Allah, they would have prepared for it. And that's a scary verse, even as it's beautiful, because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying that, you know what, if you had really wanted to take advantage of this moment with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you would have gotten ready. 
you would have prepared, you would have planned. As they say, failure to plan is planning to fail. And so we know what the program is, Ramadan. We know what the last 10 nights are. We know what fasting entails. We know what generosity is required from us. The only question to be answered then is, are we preparing for it? And the last thing that I want to share is that Ramadan is the month of competition. Ramadan is the month of competition. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum competed with each other in everything. All the time. Whether it's Umar radiallahu anhu competing with Abu Bakr, trying at least to compete with Abu Bakr. Whether it is the poor Sahaba complaining about the rich Sahaba. Ya Rasulullah, ذَهَبَ أَهْلُ الدُّثُورِ بِالْأُجُورِ يُصَلُّونَ كَمَا نُصَلِّ وَيَصُومُونَ كَمَا نُصُومُ وَيَصَدَّقُونَ مِنْ فُضُورِ أَمْوَالِهِمْ They're fasting like we fast and they pray like we pray. And they give charity that we can't give. And so the Messenger وسلم, then told them, Shall I not give you something? Shall I not tell you something that if you do it, it will be a charity for you? Every subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, that you say every single one of them is a charity. And so then they went and they started practicing that. But then the rich heard about that too. And so they started to do that also. So the poor came back and they complained to the Prophet وسلم, And they said, Oh Messenger of Allah, they're doing it too. And he said, That is the, that is the bounty of Allah. He gives it to whomever he wishes. But what I want you to pay attention to is the competition. Even Laylatul Qadr, when we were told about Laylatul Qadr, when this, this verses or this series of verses were revealed, it came as a result of the Sahaba feeling the need to compete. Who were they competing with? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum were competing with a man who the Prophet ﷺ lived before us. He was from Bani Israel. And every single day, he would go out for, uh, he would go out in the path of Allah, and every night he would spend the night in salah, in prayer. And so the Sahaba were burdened by that. They felt upset by that. This man, Worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at such a high level for 80 something years And we don't even live 80 something years The age of this ummah is between 60 and 70 as the Prophet sallallahu said We don't even live as long as the previous ummahs lived And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed and he says The night of power is better than the worship of a thousand months this gift that we've been given as a consolation for our lifespans being short as a result of the competitive nature of the Sahaba. And so this month, let this be a month where nobody races faster than me. Let this be a month where nobody gives better or at a higher quality than me. Let this be a month, let this be a month where nobody serves more than me. Let this be a month where nobody feeds more people than me. Because the month of Ramadan is the month of the fee- of. of it is the month of reciting the Qur'an and feeding people. Let nobody serve more than me, help more than me, read more than me, worship more than me. Let me compete. And in that, let the competitors compete. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi sahibi sallim sallim kathira. I wanted to conclude this khutbah talking about something that actually has just happened this morning. And that is a school shooting. And this time the school shooting, I mean this is the 22nd school shooting here in, in the United States of this year. But this time it's, uh, it's at Santa Fe, so it's very close to us here. And already they said, um, the news counts as 10 students have already been killed today, on this Friday morning. You know, I asked my, uh, I have a niece and a nephew, they're around 10 years old. I have a cousin who's around 10 also. And so I asked them a question that my parents never asked me. Elementary school, middle school, high school, college, they never asked me one time. But I asked them a question. And I don't know what was sadder, this, uh, whether 
it was sad that I had to ask them this question or I thought to ask them this question or that they had an answer for me. I asked them and I said, do you guys know what to do in a school shooting? And they said, yes. We were taught what to do in a school shooting. You're supposed to turn off the lights, you're supposed to run, you are create as many obstacles as you can and things like that. And so we have a problem with regards to the sanctity of life, the value of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مِنْ أَجْلِ ذَلِكَ كَتَبْنَا عَلَى بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ Because of this, we prescribed upon the children of Israel. مَنْ قَتَلَ نَفْسًا بِغَيْرِ نَفْسٍ أَوْ فَسَادٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا That whoever kills a believing soul without right, or to create, whoever kills a soul, whoever kills a soul without right, or to spread corruption in the land, then it is as if they've killed all of mankind. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا And whoever saves a life, then it is as if they have saved all of humanity. And so when we have these random acts of killing, and the Prophet ﷺ told us that the hour will not be established until a person will kill and they will not know why they are killing. And until a person is killed and they will not know why they are being killed. That that is one of the signs of the Day of Judgment. But to come back to this verse, Allah says, whoever kills a soul, it's as if they've killed all of mankind. But whoever saves a soul, it is as if they've saved all of mankind. And so, this conversation about gun control, or this conversation about uh, what is restricted of firearms, it is a conversation that we need to have seriously. You'll see, of course, that people will send out their thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, and that's always all that happens. But until that changes, and who knows, maybe that if we take action as a community, as a society, that we will be written amongst those who have saved lives. And whoever saves a life, it is as if they've saved all of mankind. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from us our actions. We ask Allah to accept from us our fasts. We ask Allah to accept from us our worship and our recitation of the Qur'an. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to paradise and what will bring us close to it of actions and speech and to protect us from the hellfire and what will bring us close to it of actions and speech. Allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannah wa ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin wa amal wa na'udhu bika min al-naru ma qarrab ilayha min qawlin wa amal Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaaha zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaaha anta waliyuha wa mawlaaha Allahumma aqsim ilayna min khashyatika ma tuhulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatik wa min ta'atika ma tuballighuna bihi jannatak wa min al-yaqeen ma tuhawwinu bihi alayna مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا أبدا ما أبقيتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا اللهم على من عادانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا اللهم رحماك بأهلنا المستضعفين المنكوبين في كل مكان اللهم رحماك بأهلنا في فلسطين اللهم رحماك بأهلنا في اليمن وفي برما وأفريقيا الوسطى وسائر بلاد المسلمين اللهم كن لهم ولا تكن عليهم زلزل عروش التواغيط الظالمين وأذن بفرج قريب لعبادك الموحدين واشف صدور قوم مؤمنين اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وصلاتنا ورقوعنا وسجودنا وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وقوم إلى صلاتكم يرحمني يرحمكم الله الله أكبر